So good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, very sunny afternoon after our opening yesterday. Of it may be that uh, beauty strengthened our resolve. Um, and today we will uh, have a very informal uh, afternoon with uh, Mladen Stilinovic and also with Branka Stipancic, who is co-hosting and co-guesting uh, in this in this afternoon. Um, and Mladen's, um, uh, you, you've all seen Mladen's work in the uh, uh, in the exhibition. Um, he will do a talk now. This is the format. Then we will like have a discussion. But then I will, before we start properly into discussion, I would like to ask him to show us a few more work, especially a few that have maybe a particular relevance for the place where we are. And then we would like to discuss more with uh, Branka as well. And Branka is a curator who has worked extensively with artists. Uh, from the last decades, from Croatia, from former Yugoslavia, from Eastern Europe, and not only, uh, and is also an art historian. She has um, been a, a key part in uh, writing this history of uh, of the region and of of, of uh, the different movements that happened in the whole post-war era in in uh, Eastern Europe and, and internationally. So it's great to have her around. And Branka and Mladen have also been a couple and working together for 40 years. 40 years. Yeah. Maybe one of the questions would be like, how did you manage to do that? Because that's uh, <laughs> probably one of the biggest achievements of, that anyone can actually have. Um, but without further ado, I will not drift too much. And I would just like to ask Mladen to start. Two days ago, I wrote this lecture. It is a little bit old. Uh, two days ago, I wrote this lecture. It is a little bit old, but not so. To understand this lecture, you must be concentrated, but because my language English is uh, what? Uh, my English is uh, uh, very bad and grammar is worse. In my work, I use language in various ways. One is, Bakhtin said, language is ideological sign. <laughs> and the other, Wittgenstein has this uh, 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 book about um, philosophical in, in investigation, and this book is about language and uh, different games in the language. And sometimes language is uh, like a poem, sometimes just to understand each other, but I'm not sure it about that. Uh, I wrote a, a slogan, work is disease, Karl Marx. I use ideological language against ideology. Uh, Karl Marx never said this. I invented it. Uh, why I uh, put uh, uh, Karl Marx sign? Because in that time was socialism in my country, and everything what is signed but Karl Marx was uh, true. Today is. Uh, little bit different. Uh, I cannot sign the Karl Marx because who cares today about Karl Marx? The work is from 79. And then in that time was socialism in my country. And was a lot of work, 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 and everything was about work. So I did artists at work, this uh, uh, photography downstairs, so you see. And this is about laziness, not about work. But this piece is not just about laziness. This is also about uh, <coughs> how they treated, uh, let's say, conceptual art in uh, ex-Yugoslavia. I mean, officially treated. Uh, they, they 
thought that uh, it, it, we are doing nothing, so, so I pretend to do nothing. And then you see in that uh, uh, pictures, I, I uh, in this photography, I have open eyes, closed eyes, and you cannot see the, uh, what I am doing. But I work with the open eyes, very open eyes, not with the closed eyes. I work <laughs> looking to everything, language, everyday life, newspapers, art, Etc. And art is about uh, artists at work is about laziness. In 1993, uh, wrote a text about laziness. What you, you can see downstairs. And here in Hong Kong, the text become a painting. Uh, uh, and why I decided to ask that become a painting because. They invited me a lot of time to exhibit this uh, text. And the end, the text is a painting. And then I realized that uh, <coughs> how uh, you look, <coughs> this is different. Uh, when you look to the paintings, you look three or five seconds. And a text you must read. So now you can just look. <coughs> and not to read. <coughs> In the <coughs> early 70s, I, I, I play with the red color and the pink. And uh, this is socialistic time, and I, I, I was joking about red color. And uh, I also use pink because uh, the pink was, uh, uh, for me, in that time, I think uh, what is opposite of the red. So I think pink will be opposite of the red. <coughs> uh, red is something revolutionary and powerful and so on. But also, uh, what, what I don't like in this uh, red in that time, because I think <coughs> color cannot be possessed by anyone, like a Communist Party or government or religion movement on everyone. Because ha color is uh, something different. Color is uh, just a color, not belong to any of these. <coughs> and uh, what about Eng English language? In 1977, uh, in Amsterdam, I have lecture against English language Lecture was in Croatian language, so now nobody understood what I am talking about. In 1993, I did a piece, Artists Who Cannot Speak English is Not Artist. And in 2000, I did a dictionary of English where every word is a pain. English for me <coughs> is a pain. Because it's a power, and power always produces the pain. English language today, but even 10 years ago, or 20 years ago, maybe more, is really powerful in uh, all the field, economically, artistically, whatever. <coughs> and now I will say something about these Chinese pieces. I work with the new newspaper, so one day I saw in newspapers photography from the tri <coughs> public try <coughs> uh, like 10 years or 50 years ago, I, I don't remember exactly, uh, of this f uh, Fu, Fu Gong, how is it? Fang Gong. Gong in China. And in these photos, people, uh, uh, they put the, in the mouths uh, of the people newspapers. So to, to be, to not to speak. So I did a photography of me also, <coughs> put it in the mouth uh, uh, the, the newspapers. So, and uh, the, ti uh, the title of this is 
work is uh, uh, China, uh, Chinese propaganda. Uh, this event is very cruel, but very true. Why is it true? Because 90% uh, uh, of the people of the world speak what is uh, 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 going on in newspaper. So we don't need to speak anymore, just put the newspapers in the mouth and that is. So we'll be nicer and we'll be silent. So for me, have this, uh, this piece has two different levels. Uh, the other piece uh, about China was how China uh, is about to work. How China destroyed American and European work, workers, but work. Uh, just with the low prices of the work. And now, what will be happen? I don't know. In my piece, it's uh, just zero. So work is, uh, value of the work is zero. And uh, workers fall asleep. So what's happened with this, I don't know. <laughs> if they wake up or something. Maybe you tell us more about the work. What? Maybe you tell us more about this work. What uh, more? Maybe you explain more about the, the, the work, what it was, since we cannot see it, since it's not here. Ah, this is a, a piece uh, uh, where I took a photography of workers in, from one book, and then uh, it's a collage, uh, it's uh, like 20 collage, and every time is a different uh, sign uh, uh, of value of the work. So it's going like 5,000, 3,000, and then in the Our end was work, yes. zero. And uh, up is uh, a <coughs> cut from a dollar bill uh, where, where it says, in God we trust. Because I, I uh, really uh, use uh, many times these uh, from dollar bill, you know that they have these uh, slogans, in God we trust. Because uh, if you think about this, you don't know who is the God in this sense, because it's on the money. So money is the God, or God is the money. So this is really not so clear. And then I like very much the end of one my, my text. And uh, in that text I said, I don't know why I told you this story. I can tell another one. Maybe next time I tell you another one. But you will see that it's the same story. Always it's the same story. So this is one end. The second end is, you lie, you lie like a Bible, <coughs> is said, said the, uh, uh, one gypsy woman in the marketplace in Zagreb. <coughs> and then what I want to do <laughs> is finish. <laughs> 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 what to do to give you to read aloud my slogans. So I prepare here. So I will give you, so we'll be a little retrospective of this slot. So, begin and 
so we go like this. Yeah. And do we need to uh, recite it or to how do you prepare it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every day I pray the rosary. Oh, the su super I get to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, really, uh, I don't think so. I just, uh, okay. Let me prove it. Every day I pray the rosary for the Pope to abolish the church. <laughs> I don't see no idol. Sorry? I don't see no idol. See no. See no. See no. I see no. Thank you for everything. Dead bureaucracy says to dead bureaucracy, you are dead bureaucracy. <laughs> Please? Hot money, black stock exchange. An attack on my art is an attack on socialism and progress. Yes, <laughs> this is an important. You will be happy, you are happy, you were happy. <laughs> Long life money. <laughs> Work is a word. Work, Work cannot exist. <laughs> this is not the right time. <laughs> I hear them talk about the data of art. The data of art is the data of the artist. Someone wants to kill me. Help. <laughs> <laughs> Buying courage, determination, fighter spirit, safety. Language on sale. <laughs> okay. I can do that too. Yes. <laughs> 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 no, yes. <laughs> I can do that too. Yes. So uh, you can keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I have lots of questions, but like, for, I have lots of questions, but like before I start, I know that Chantal, for example, had a question, and then uh, would be good to sort of like open it like that, or like you had like a concern, or you wanted to start the discussion about the, and it was about like what Mladen had mentioned already, and about uh, the the having the praise of la laziness, the manifesto transformed from what it was, you know, a manifesto, a, a, a text that didn't have like a concrete form into something that became a kind of object of art, of a, a painting itself in the Dauphin oil painting village. Do you want to reiterate your point, Chantal? Uh, I, I, I was just asking Cosmin at that point, though. Yeah, Cosmin, you were asking about the manifesto, right? Yeah. Does the reiteration of that Paint now what was a print and now is a painting. Does that change the the moment of the of the original uh, creation of the work? Like at that point, was it a print medium and now uh, is is the reproduction through Daffin Village something of uh, more contem not, not contemporary spirit, but something that is um, a phenomenon only possible now? And is that why? I'm just wondering. I don't know how to. Uh, uh. I I uh, uh, I have a lot of uh, you see uh, slogans, so I have a lot of text in uh, my work. So, but never I, I did, uh, uh, and this is uh, paintings. I mean, it's uh, painted on mostly on cardboard in different colors. And uh, why I did it here is uh, uh, in that sense that uh, I, I said uh, that. One was a text, and now became a picture painting, and then uh, it's obviously these different things. I don't know why uh, they many times they invited me that that I exhibit the text. So for me, I said, okay, I don't care about this. I was, uh, but in the end, I see that. Uh, maybe it's a better that it's a painting. But the, the, pa the painting was produced not by you. No, no, but this is about laziness. <laughs> I just pay in my... <laughs> to be a lazy... <laughs> but in the... <laughs> in the past you had it simply photocopied, but why... It could, it could still be photocopied, but why reproduce? I mean, I understand the value system, but is it... Uh, an acceptance of the phenomenon of the fact that there is this level of industry now that is possible. Yeah, it's a, uh, th yeah, this is uh, true because it's, I, I ask uh, uh, 
course, mean that uh, it's possible to do here, and we do it in one day, the two days. So it's really possible to do quickly and without. We pay, yes, but without any <laughs> other. <laughs> I mean, it's you know also. I think reading the manifesto itself, and there is a, there is you know almost like a punk spirit in it, and of course there is. Um, I mean, there's like there's there's like a very concrete spirit in it, you know, of like you know, of of, of of art as something that is not necessary or is not uh, the best form of saying something or of doing something or the best strategy, but it's something that can be done, you know, it's something that you know has 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 a value that doesn't need to justify itself in a way. You know. So, I think being a, being a kind of commentary in in this spirit. It's difficult to judge it from the criteria of, you know, is this the best way of, of, of argumenting or of like critiquing a system, something that you would apply, of, you know, of, of somebody making a point in a in a, in a in an in an essay or in a kind of like academic interpretation of a, of a particular set of of a, of a of a fact of a social reality, like the Daphne or village. Okay. When I saw the painting, I was. Um, when I saw this painting, it's just a curiosity. There is like a tick yeah. at the bottom right. What does it mean? Like done? Or. Uh, uh, this sorry. is a mark in the school. This is a mark in the school. Which means? Uh, I, I've seen it. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. And uh, must be one, two, three, four, but <laughs> I have another piece about okay. uh, mark in the school, but this is a. Uh, that uh, uh, some uh, teacher uh, saw this and he marked. Mm. I think it has a level of importance. I don't know why, but because you know, uh, in in um, um, it's a it's a, it's a painting, but still it's a text that you that you wrote, and that that mark is somehow establishing that someone else is doing the painting with you, or that someone else is reading it you know after you've wrote it so it it's kind of break the um, the position in which you as an artist did the work yourself and you establish a relationship either with an authority who review it or uh, with a spectator who in a way you know look at the work uh, read the work slash the painting and i found it very interesting because it was mirroring somehow like my position towards the work and then i found that i was you know, as lazy as you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have some questions. I was curious about this uh, red and pink uh, relationship because, of course, I have these two works which are red and pink, and uh, I didn't know that uh, for you it's an important uh, parallel as a, as a chromatic reference. And also, second question is you said something about um, using ideal. If he just want, I didn't. I yeah, understood yeah, okay. red and pink are yeah. important for him, but not why. So if if you want or can elaborate on that. And the second one is about um, language. You said something like I use ideological language as a non I, uh, to abolish ideology or something like that. Yeah. Again, I'm very interested uh, to hear more about that. So I, I uh, um, in the 70s I, I uh, have a lot of uh, work uh, with the uh, red. So uh, one uh, one question appeared in that because uh, uh, in that time was uh, conceptual art and uh, uh, was important tautology. But uh, I, I saw the uh, Kossuth piece, uh, 43 letters in red uh, noun, mm -hmm. like tautology. But in socialistic time in my country, when I see this, first, this is not tautological because it's red and means uh, socialism. And the second one is uh, in neon, and in neon is advertising. So for my opinion, in that piece, Kossuth advertise red. So this is uh, something uh, completely different that he thought. He thought this is a poor tautology, nothing else, just 43 letters. But you can read from because 
I'm, I'm living in, in that time in socialist country, I can read this completely in another level. So tautology, in that sense, cannot exist in red color. So this is, and then I, I, I do it a lot of tauto tautology stuff in red color because it's not possible to do. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's possible, but it's uh, something else. Always is something else. But also, <coughs> uh, I have one text about this red and pink when I explain this, what I said now. And also I explained that uh, 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 I, I don't like that anyone, uh, or party or whatever, or church or uh, possessed uh, uh, color. Yeah. Like uh, what has happened with this swastika sign? So it, we cannot use it anymore because it's obviously fascism. So this sign is dead for us. So it's not possible to use. So in that sense also in that time, uh, red is not possible to use in the poor tautological well or emotional way. Yeah, just like a monochrome red painting will be. And I have sometimes, and uh, in that time, I exhibit uh, some paintings, uh, and then I have this red, and then because. In the West, they always said, oh, you are a communist, because I <laughs> use red. I said, oh, my goodness, <laughs> this is opposite, you know. So, and this is a lot of mistake about this. And this uh, about, uh, and, the uh, and, the, and the pink was opposite. It was a feminine, feminine, not heroic. And then <coughs> a very uh, weak color, in one sense. And then in that time, they called uh, uh, Sweden like uh, pink socialism. So I like this. <laughs> and I also use uh, uh, artificial silk for that. Mm -hmm. So what's also a little bit feminine, you know, so like uh, underwear. You de-ideologize the color? Yeah, I try, <laughs> but not possible. <laughs> well, I think it is, in a way. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe not then, but now. Yeah, that now it's different. Now it's different. I, I finish with the red color. <laughs> now I use it uh, free, <laughs> no, no, not any uh, meaning of socialism. And what is about the second one? It, well, it's very similar because it's how language is related to <coughs> ideology. And if you talk about language as a painting, <laughs> maybe you answer it already. Yeah, that, 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 that is different. That, uh, uh, when I start to use the language, and later I, I read this Bhakti stuff, uh, that he said that uh, 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 word is uh, ideological sign. This is the point, one point. And the other point is uh, when Wittgenstein said that the language have a, a different gains. So I use uh, language in different position. You know, sometimes, like in ideological sign, sometimes like a game and like a poem or whatever. But uh, uh, in the time I, uh, socialistic time, I, I tried to use uh, ideological language against uh, ideology, like uh, here is, uh, you have this slogan, uh, attack. Uh, in the attack of my heart is attack of socialism and progress. <laughs> <laughs> so, Branka now better. Yeah, uh, this is a, a, a very weird situation because you have in socialism uh, some point when they said it's not possible to criticize something. For example, you cannot uh, criticize one famous uh, uh, poet uh, uh, in Croatia because it was uh, almost uh, God and uh, communist and so on. <coughs> so I think when I said the attack on my art is attack on socialism, 
They have no sense because I'm not in the power. I'm just a, a, a poor artist in the time, you know. And then it's a inverse situation, you know. But I use this political language when they have to use them. Like a attack on Miroslav Krleža is the name of this uh, poet. Attack on Miroslav Krleža is attack on socialism. They said that. So it's very stupid because attack on Miroslav Krlaša is just an attack on him, not... But it's interesting that he was a poet, so someone who uses words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I would like to ask you, Mladen, because um, of course the, um, uh, the manifesto refers to specific conditions of uh, production, it refers to a certain um, uh, um, way in which the art system constitutes itself. It makes a distinction between the socialist and the, and the capitalist ways of production. Of course, now that distinction is irrelevant as we're living in, you know, pretty much the same universal system of art. But still, maybe you can, not necessarily from the perspective of the manifesto, but since you have been, uh, you know, part of many uh, different eras and places and have, have, have worked quite actively both in, in, in Western Europe in a different moment of its history and in the East you've been like, you know, actively working, you know, also you mentioned it in Amsterdam in the, in the 70s and so on. So you have witnessed a, a whole transformation, uh, not only of the value of art, but of the whole system of production and of, rep of representation and the institutional framework of contemporary art through these different eras and, 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 and places. Um, how has this changed, how, does this, how did this affect your work as an artist and your, 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 your position, these major changes? And again, it's not just about the change of coming from the Eastern Europe and then the transition to something else, because you have had a much more uh, nuanced observation possibility to observe the system as you have been part of both systems from the beginning and then you have seen then the changes in both places as well throughout the years until they became one system that is at its turn changing as well. But uh, in, uh, in, when I start in the 70s, this is a, a quite open situation with this mm -hmm. conceptual art and we exhibit uh, quite a lot abroad. Just like karaoke last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, in the 70s. So, I go in West Europe, I exhibit and so on. But what's happened it was the uh, 80s. You know, in the 80s, and then you have uh, in different, in Italy also and everywhere, you have this, uh, like, a, this uh, uh, non-profit organization. But in the 80s, they collapsed. And they, they came these uh, new paintings, Transavangardia, whatever it is called. So it, they, everything stops in one moment, for me also. You know, when did you know, how did you know this? Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, because nobody invited to, uh, <laughs> so they stopped. Uh, I exhibit uh, uh, in that time uh, mostly in the, in the space uh, uh, was uh, PM Gallery, what is Iran. So I exhibit there. <laughs> so this is a, a really a weird situation. But it's like a five or six or seven years, it's happened like this. And then again was a revival of this conceptualism or whatever is the name of this, this new art. And then uh, you see, in that moment, you see how it's transformed in the West. Not in the East, because we have a gallery, we have this system. So in the East, it doesn't matter it's if you are a painter or you are a conceptual artist. You have a gallery, no, no gallery, no museums, and so on. So the same is for every artist. So who, how, was you, how are you supporting yourself at home? At home? At the, this is a different, really? different. Uh, mama support me. My mother support me, my wife support me, and so 
<laughs> but uh, everybody lives like that in that time. I, I mean, I'm not only one. And then now it's uh, now it's different. Yeah, now it's different. And they, I, 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 almost twenty years I exhibit abroad. They both my work and so on. It, it's going on very well. So. This is uh, different. And then you, uh, you see how it's changed this capitalism, but the socialism not. And then you have 90s, and then uh, everything collapsed. And then still in my country, in, in Croatia, we have a gallery, proper gallery, uh, commercial gallery, really for this art, just a few people, and museum buy. But museum buy every 10 years. so. You cannot live with this. So to, today also the young uh, uh, conceptual artists or whatever you call this uh, uh, suffer a lot, you know. And then they go out, uh, you know, this, uh, how it's called, this um, stipendia and so on from different places and so on. But still is the same, like in socialistic time. But they can go to abroad and maybe now it's a good moment to bring Branka in the discussion. That's right. And and if you wanna intervene in, in this discussion and Maybe like to also because you told me secretly that this is a good way to instigate Mladen to like give your own perspective to this question, and then uh, uh, how how did you, from your perspective, notice this transformation and this? Uh, uh the big difference uh, between seventies and today is that the world become much more open. Uh, because in 70s, a few curators came to Yugoslavia. They visited us. They saw the art scene. Uh, actually, uh, the same was in other Eastern European ca countries. That was a really, really good and interesting art, only that nobody knows about this. So some projects like um, this exhibition in Amsterdam mentioned by Mladen, Words and Works, uh, was the meeting point where the artists from West and East come together. Uh, that was a very many uh, artist books exhibitions around. That was an exhibition by Richard De Marco. Uh, he always traveled in the East and invited artists to Edinburgh. Uh, but we can count it all those exhibitions on fingers. Uh, so that was a not a very many chances that artists uh, went abroad and showing their words, uh, works. So that was a uh, knowledge about the, what the people are working inside the country uh, very on very low level. Uh, but artists were very uh, self-confident. They knew they were doing well. So they uh, were keep going. So from 60s up to 2000, they are, um, I, I followed uh, such an artistic careers in uh, Croatia. So they were working continuously without uh, having um, uh, a normal view on their arts. You know, so that was a great artist like Tomislav Gotovas, uh, Goran Terbuljak, Dalibor Martini, Sanja Ivekovic, only recently, last 10 years, 15 years, is um, very well known abroad. But most of them, some of them even died in a, uh, without recognition. Even during their lives, the books and catalogs uh, were not made. So it was um, rather strange uh, situation in the country. Uh, probably very strong personalities. They they knew what they were doing, but they didn't care if the rest of the world 
if they cannot leave from this, first of all, and then uh, they, they, they left without recognition. Uh, but today, I think with <laughs> new technology, which is firstly email, uh, then the, and also uh, the, um, that the, all the countries open their um, um, frontiers. Uh, so there are Western curators coming, and then the exhibitions uh, become mm, very uh, on regular basis. Um, but as Madden said, 80s was really difficult for all of them. Uh, but uh, there was a lot of um, alternative spaces in Yugoslavia, and they exhibited mostly there. Also, there was a gallery of contemporary art and some other exhibitions in the um, Zagreb Ljubljana Belgrade. Uh, so they had the solo shows and some solo shows abroad. But mostly now the situation is uh, rather different. Um, even young, uh, mostly young artists, uh, nobody care about them in the country, but they are going out and uh, exhibiting all over the world. So it depends about on quality, but not about that uh, West is not interested in East. Right, now I also wanted to ask you, because well, this was some of the discussion on, on, on money, but I just wanted to like broaden the, the, the discussion on, if we, if we talk about the context in like Croatia especially, because it's not, and I think that's important to mention that it's not just an, uh, you know, one of the many peripheral areas of, of, of this world, but it has been like one of the uh, avant posts of, of, of avant garde since the post war era and some of the most radical uh, artists and, 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 and ideas in art have happened there. And I all starting around the Gorgona group in the 50s and, and things that were. Um, um, really opening up like a new worlds and new ideas and new forms and new vocabularies uh, uh, very early on. So maybe you just, you know, of course it's not about giving a kind of like a, a history of this context, but it would be interesting of just saying this is also like an, an interest that we have here and it's something that we're like following through through different projects, but like what would be the source of such you know, radical movements. Like, what was it about the place and the and the circumstance that such ideas could be put forward, and you know, this kind of spirit? Um, that was a Gorgona group in Zagreb, active from '59 to '66, and uh, maybe it's important to say that Zagreb in '60s was very open city. It was a um, time when uh, government liked to show that uh, we didn't, uh, we are not the same as the Eastern Bloc, and they put a lot of energy and some money into the bringing artists from all, all over the world for different occasions. One of them was a um, um, biennial uh, music biennial uh, started in Zagreb in '61, so. Already in '63, John Cage uh, came with uh, his concert. At the same time, Stockhausen came, and uh, people from East and the West uh, came to Zagreb uh, to perform their uh, music. That was also a, a film festival uh, of avant-garde film uh, called GEF. Uh, I remember in uh, 1970, uh, we looked uh, all uh, the series of underground American film. Uh, we saw Yoko Ono and John Lennon's film, and uh, <laughs> and it was a film mm, uh, festival connected with the sex, you know. That was a really uh, great town. So also... Uh, um, it was uh, underground uh, films, and also was topical sex, which is rather strange for a um, communist ca country, isn't it? Mm, yes. It's, uh, I mean, in a positive, <laughs> in a positive <laughs> way. So, uh, but uh, what was also uh, interesting, uh, um, Yugoslavia at that time, they didn't care about copyrights. 
They translated whatever they wanted, you know, especially in the magazines, in uh, cultural magazines, without asking permission. So that was um, the whole things were translated. Um, so we knew a lot about conceptual art. We knew a lot about happening and uh, uh, fluxus. That was a really good selection uh, of uh, translation in literature. So they paid for the literature copyrights. <laughs> uh, and uh, when the Gorgona group uh, came on the scene, uh, I thought, um, how come they've been connected so very well with um, Oriental philosophy, with Zen Buddhism? And so they didn't know this through the, let's say, the, some uh, art groups around, but they knew through the, uh, <coughs> through reading uh, the the original uh, uh, um, philo philosophical text translated into the uh, our language. So that was books and books, and anybody who wants to n know something. Uh, it was a, uh, he was a, uh, or she, a uh, possibility to uh, catch the topic. And uh, so Gorgona Group uh, started as a very, very um, uh, interesting group. Uh, they, they knew about the fluxes. They connected the artists. They uh, invited artists to participate in the um, uh, Gorgona magazine, which was an, as an Art, artist book. Uh, so let's say they invited Manzoni. Uh, Manzoni did some projects. They invited uh, Dieter Roth, who uh, did uh, one number for them. Uh, even the uh, writer Harold uh, uh, Peter, um, Harold Pinter, and so. Uh, but what happened to Gorgona Group? Uh, Although they used to run the gallery at that time, they published a magazine, they established connection with uh, all the artists around. Uh, they, they were sending their magazines in the proper addresses at that time, even to the MoMA. MoMA had a collection of uh, Gorgona magazines from 68 already. Uh, what happens to them? They just uh, didn't act anymore and they disappear into history. Uh, when the second generation came, uh, like Mladen and a group of six artists and um, Derbuljak and so, they didn't know about the Gorgona activity. So we, today we cannot say that there is a, a continuation of um, one movement after the other, but that was just a gap between. Today we are creating a history but at that time, uh, we didn't actually know until 77, almost nothing about Gorgona Group. Although we knew the people. We were, we've been very uh, good with um, uh, uh, Yulia Knifer and Dimitri Basicic Mangelos, and even Putar, uh, people who were moving around, but they never told us about the activity of Gorgona Group. So. It uh, happens in an um, undeveloped country where the history was not written, where that was uh, not a museum of contemporary art, where nobody can learn one from other. Thank you. Um, are there any questions around? around? <laughs> can be childish. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a question? No, I'm waiting for the book to see if I have And will you have a question afterwards, or it's yeah, too much yeah, time? Because no, no, I'm happy to listen. The book was um, done uh, last year, uh, when he had a retrospective exhibition in um, Ludwig Museum in Budapest. Uh, but the Sing. Uh, it's English. <laughs> why? Uh, why is the because title? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, according one of his works, where he took a photo of his face, uh, and he glued here um, money, and down it was written sing, and actually. 
Yeah, yeah maybe Mladen can it's explain. It's interesting because this, that then it implies also sound, and uh, Mladen spoke about different... No, no, it's a talk uh, about um, how one can say that um, if I am paying you, you have to sing for me. So if you put the money on the forehead of the artist, yeah, order. So, it's more of an Eastern European way but of also weddings and at other banquets where people who would sing would be given money and sort of sometimes like glued and put on, on, on the head and asked to sing and to entertain. This could be kind of friendly. It looks like uh, offensive, you know, but in a, in a people's um, drinking. drinking and festivity, this is like a habit. Uh, especially, <laughs> but this is, is in symbolical way when he put on his. But Mladen said also, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, there, there, there is uh, also they said if, if you go, if uh, police catch you, and then you must sing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, this is a special also in English. Yeah. You will sing. Yeah. People, thank you very much, thank Blanca you. and Vladen and everyone for joining us. For singing. For singing, <laughs> yes. For singing. <laughs> and uh, the singing will, will go on. Thank you.